Hello friends, Yossi here. How's everyone doing? Today we're going to talk about the nine worst mistakes your buyer agent can do for you or maybe against you. What do I mean? I mean, what are the nine worst things that an agent acting for you when you're trying to buy a place can do? These are the nine things you want to keep an eye for and on your agent when he's acting for you as buyer's agent. You're going to go buy a place, you're going to put an offer in whether it's a new construction or assignment or resale, whatever, and there are things um, that you want to pay attention for and to. And these nine, particularly, is in, a, is, is in a resale or assignment situation. So nine terrible things that should not happen when an agent's working for you. Now, before we start, i got to tell you something, okay? This is not about to bash the agent. Uh, especially not the buyer's agent, which is usually the big, uh, many of the beginning agents, those who are starting up, that they'll start working with renters and then buyers and then graduate to <laughs> doing more listings, like I do. Because I was a buyer agent and still am uh, for a long time, and I've made all these nine mistakes a million times each. So let's learn, let's joke at me, and let's learn from my experience. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, I'm doing a lot of listings, and... When I get offers, I look at the offers and I look at how the agent is sending me the offers, how they communicate and how they behave and what's their style and everything, how they write their offers. <clears throat> and, and immediately you can get an idea of not only who this person is, but you'll know right away just by looking at the offer if this, this, this guy's for real or lady, guy, when I say guy, I mean an agent. This person's for real. Okay, if I, I can tell you right away from a glance if this will happen or not. And I'm not even talking about the price. The price fine, but you know, like you can get an offer which is looks perfect, but there's something in it that's just not gonna let it happen. So let's go over the nine worst mistakes your buyer agents uh, can do for you or to you, depending on your perspective. Okay, and number one uh, is of course placing your bid, placing your offer for the wrong place. Just shouldn't go for that one. Okay, that is that is just. The number one. Why is it a number one? Because you really got to pay attention to what is that that you're trying to accomplish here? What is that that you're investing in? What's your goal here? And is this property the right for you? And I, I think a lot of people throw in uh, offers where they shouldn't. And your buyer's agent should go, yo, <laughs> Mr. or Ms. Buyer, are you sure you want to build in that place? This is uh, not what you really indicated uh, to me, or maybe the place not that great, or the price too high, whatever it is. There's some things here that uh, me, as a as a realtor professional, gotta warn you about. Okay, so agents, you have to be open with your buyers and and just let them know. You know, just be real with them and let them know. Um, maybe that's not the best place to send an offer. Now, obviously, we as agents, we don't know everything, and we shouldn't assert our uh, wishes, thinking, whatever it is, knowledge, anything on, on another person, definitely not our clients. But at the same time, we can provide them with a second opinion and say, you know, we talk about this and, and you wanted to do this and, and or maybe it's the agent is trying to convince you to bid on that place and it just doesn't feel right. So that's the, the number one. It's the wrong place. Okay. Uh, and the rest of them, I'm going to get a little technical and, and very detailed today. Okay. So uh, the second one is unprepared. The agent is unprepared. They haven't done the research about the property, about um, who's buying, who's selling, what is needed, what's the, what's the deposit structure, how much the price is, um, what conditions need to be in, what conditions uh, do not need to be in, or can be waived before, you know, it can look that before, uh, before submitting the offer. You know, for example, some condos have the, the condo... Um, uh, the strata ready for you before you even bid the offer. So you can grab that and, and, and scan that, even send it to your lawyer to check to check it out if there's anything coming out of the ordinary there. Okay, be prepared. Be prepared. Okay. The second one, um, and that is to do with agent-to-agent -agent communications, which is the buyer's agent is unfriendly or rude to the seller's agent. And this is more common than you know. And, you know, I've been on both sides and we all people here and we all say the things that we don't like to say and we regret saying and sometimes we don't even notice we've done that. But what I find is when other agents communicate to me, there are very few of them that 
are easy to um, speak with because they're just normal. They're just they're just nice. They're polite. They're respectful, and they're here to do the job. And a lot of them, especially if there's a little bit of a back and forth, will immediately go to the next drama level. And that's is completely unnecessary, and in my opinion, not professional. Um, agents are here to be professionals, and the job of the agent is to get the job done. So if you're working, if if you are a buyer looking to invest in a property. You got to make sure that your agent always stays cool and always respectful to everyone involved with. So it's the in this case, and you know, because I'm I'm the listing agent, I receive the offers, and sometimes <laughs> they're not very nice. Uh, they can be rude, you know, whatever, and that's not a good thing because that that starts on the wrong foot. You know, a personal connection between the two agents is very very important. So buyers, when you are selecting your buyer's agent. Select someone who also stays cool, okay, always respectful. It's very, very important because, you know, you're negotiating, you're down to the last five or $10,000 or whatever, you know, and maybe there's another offer. Who's going to take it? The person who's easier to communicate to. It, it's just human nature. So remember that. Okay. The next one, which is a real big one these days, I see too many of these, and it's called incomplete offers. So... You instruct your agent to send an offer. The agent sends you a PDF and you, you sign it and then the agent takes it and forwards it. But what do you know? That offer is incomplete. And you know I, I can't show you on YouTube uh, the stuff that I'm getting. But I, I, I get assignment offers like half of the numbers are missing. And I get resale uh, um, offers that clauses are missing. Or, you know, and I've done that too. You copy and paste from another offer and then you forget to replace what's in it. It's not good. Um, so, you know, there's incomplete offers. Information is missing. And then there's um, bad information, mistaken, not the right one, incomplete sentences, even poor grammar. Don't have it in your offers. Okay. What did I write here? Oh, yeah, yeah. Two, okay, this is this is also a very good one, and that also has to do with agent to agent, and that is too many texts and emails. So I receive the offer, and then I get bombarded by the agent. They text me, and then they email me, and then they call me, and then they leave me a message at the office, and it's imagine being on the receiving end of that, okay? Now, you, the investor, the buyer, you have no idea this is happening, but your agent is bombarding me with all kinds, and this is happening a lot. You know, when you send the offer, all you got to do is you you register the offer and then you send the offer to the agent. Then it's polite that you'll get in touch and say, hello, my name is so-and-so. I registered the offer. Uh, here's my offer. I sent it to you. Here's the whatever information I think you should I should tell you, even though it's in writing and anything else. And thank you very much. Looking forward to working with you. And that's how it should be. Okay, but instead what I get is I get like a barrage of texts. And then in the text is all these ridiculous things. And then in the text themselves, they try to negotiate in the text. And they say, well, you know, I send you the offer this way, but if you need any changes, then you can do it. But don't, don't do it like that. That's terrible. And you buyers, you have no idea that the person that is working for you and going to spend you a million dollars is doing these things. No, no, no. Okay? The agent, and you can't really control this thing. All you can do is really select a good buyer's agent and hope that person is 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 the best you can find. Uh, because if they're gonna uh, start barraging people, you know it's it's annoying, it's confusing, and it's creating a, like a negative energy. Then then you don't want to work with them. And imagine that your offer is not the only one. There's another one. Who you know who which whose offer is gonna be selected? Assuming these two offers are similar, identical. They're going to select the one that is easier to work with. That's it. People. Okay, number five is numbers. So, um, number six, sir. Number six is numbers. That means the numbers are incomplete or they're wrong. You know, it's real estate. It's not really, it's not really rocket science. Take out your calculator and use the plus and the minus. That's all you need to do. Okay, so make sure those numbers are correct. And... If you're not sure, before you send the offers out, investors, buyers, send the copy of the offer before you send it to the, to the lawyer, okay? So get a second opinion from your real estate lawyer, and they can come back and say, you know, here's how we think 
um, this is what we suggest for your offer to make to make it better or, or, or maybe to correct it maybe they found something that's really good now that's not always possible in case that there's a good property com coming up or, and, and uh, the deadline for putting the offers is just in a couple of hours so that's got to be a problem but the numbers is very very important okay number seven is clauses some agents put a million clauses in their offers. It makes the offers very cumbersome to work with, and the more clauses you have, the more chances of problems you're going to have, whether it's technical problem, a typo, or cut and paste. Maybe there's more chance for, 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 for things to break. Okay, You have to have just the enough number of clauses that pertain to your specific purchase, and that's it. You don't need to put anything else that is unnecessary. Okay, so put the right clauses in, and the minimum is the best that covers your needs. And once again, if you're not sure, run it by your lawyer, and, and they, they can take a look. And if it's uh, because a lot of people forget that the actual offer, the agreement of purchase and sale that you send, is three pages long. And if you read it, a lot of stuff's already covered it. And I find a lot of buyer's agents making the mistake of adding all these unnecessary clauses already covered in the actual document they're signing because they don't read it. Or sometimes, in case of a rental, you know they'll add a lot of stuff that is already covered in the tenant uh, landlord tenant uh, um, bylaw. Okay, so your clauses are important. Okay, uh, number eight, eight out of nine is communications. And maybe this is the the biggest one when the buyer's agent does not know how to communicate, and that's I, I said before they can be rude or obnoxious or just send too many messages. Um, they may not have the lingo. They may not have. They may not have done the the homework and have not have looked at anything. I totally forgot to show you all these little things I had ready here. Um, but the, when but the communication is not good, um, that's a problem because it makes it a lot more difficult to communicate, and the chances are that your offer uh, will go through or less. And we are here to close the offers to get the good deals. Okay, number nine and the last one of the nine worst mistakes your buyer's agent can do for you. That's a really bad one. But, okay, um, I'll say it this way. Not bring value. Not bring value to the table, okay? When you hire a professional, you're going to pay him a lot of money through the purchase price to represent you. They need to bring value. And this is really summary of everything. They need to make sure that the offer goes to the right place. That means that they select in the right property. They need to make sure that the numbers are right. They need to make sure that the clauses are right. They need to make sure that they're prepared. They need to make sure that they're in the right state of mind and the right mood to contact the other person and, and have good human communication, personal communication. Okay, that's very important. A lot of people forget that. A lot of people forget, a lot of buyer's agents forget that if their offers get rejected, because usually because something they've missed on, okay, then they get upset. You shouldn't get upset. You say, I'm sorry, let me give me another chance, I'll send you a better one. And that's how you gotta do it. Okay. They put too many clauses, usually redundant, uh, they don't bring any value. Investors, buyers, when you select your buyer's agent, get someone that brings you value, whatever the value is to you. I gave you nine options here, what it could be, but you know it, it's endless. So you make sure that whatever you're doing is good for you, it, it represents you, and it does the best for you. So that's the big mistake. That's the unprofessional person, that's pretty funny. Okay, and uh, we'll stay with this. Good enough for today. Take care, everyone. If you need me, you know how to reach me, right here. Later.